All right, guys, today I want to do something a little special. This video is not just for the regular people watching my channel. This video is for Ford Motor Company. All right, guys, so today I want to do something a little different. This video is not just for you everyday watchers watching YouTube. Thank you for watching. This is for Ford Motor Company. I got a crazy idea. All right, guys, today I want to do something a little different. You see me do lots of videos on the Ford Raptors, and today's going to be a Ford Raptor video, but I got a crazy idea. This is for you, Ford Motor Company. So let's do this. So this is an all new 2024. Ford F-150 Raptor. We just did a video on this. So when Ford came out with the Raptor in 2010, it was truly a game changer for the light duty truck industry. When I say light duty, I'm talking half, half ton truck segment, not midsize. A truck that you could take off road. What a home run. It was fun. It's been super successful. Here we are looking at, call it the fourth generation, third and a half generation, whatever. 14 years later, the Raptor is still out. It's went through lots of different changes. When it first came out, it was just in a super cab configuration, not a full crew cab like you can only get it today. When it also first came out, it had a 5.4 liter V8. Then a year after production started, they put the 6.2 liter in it, which was a great upgrade over the 5.4. Uh, then the following year, they then brought out what a lot of people wanted, four full doors for a family. How awesome would that be? That was a great move. Then they kept making more and more refinements, frame upgrades, headlight upgrades, interior upgrades, um, shock upgrades, and then the second generation truck came out. And then that gave you a stronger frame and they went EcoBoost. Now, the EcoBoost has been a very successful engine for Ford Motor Company and Lincoln. Makes a lot of power. It gets good fuel economy. There were a few hiccups along the way, a few little issues with the turbos and maybe some cam phaser issues, but generally speaking, they've been pretty great. I've had a, probably a dozen of them and I've had relatively small issues and I like them. They're great livable motors day to day. Then the third generation came out, very similar to this. They brought us even more revised, nicer interior, huge upgrade from that regard, a little bit changed fascia, fascia and then they went five link suspension. This was a huge upgrade for off-road guys as well as on road, the third generation Raptor rides and drives phenomenal. The next generation Fox live valve suspension, phenomenal. And then what did Ford do? They brought out the Raptor R. The Raptor R was like the king. People that wanted a V8, they finally got that opportunity. It's amazing. If you've never driven one, the motor is the most impressive factory V8 I've ever driven. I just love it. It sounds great. The power, the performance, it's an engine that just keeps going. It does not want to sign off on power. But to be fair, for most people, it's just not affordable. I mean, Raptors in itself are very expensive trucks. They're 80, $90,000. Raptor R's are 115. Some dealers are, I hate to say it, gouging people and getting $150,000, plus their limited allocation. What if Ford had an answer for the guy that wanted the V8 in a Raptor, but yet doesn't want to pay $150,000. And it's not just an answer, Ford has to have an answer because Ram now has the new RHO coming out. And you've heard me talk about that on my channel. I'm super impressed with this new twin turbo hurricane engine. It's a direct competitor to this engine. This motor has been out 11, 13 years now, 3.5 uh, EcoBoost engine, makes great power, 450 horsepower, 510 foot pounds of torque. Chrysler came out with the inline six cylinder turbo, three liter, twin turbos, 540 horsepower, 500 and I think 50 foot pounds of torque. It's got more horsepower, quite a bit more horsepower, more torque, and it doesn't sound bad. That's been the biggest issue was the sound complaint. Ford fixed that issue, in my opinion, in 2021. I think the new Gen 3 and above Ford Raptor, I think the exhaust actually sounds really great with the trombone design and unique uh, exhaust design. They did a great job but everybody still wants a V8. And now there's more competition in this segment. The, the TRX obviously was a competitor, but yet not. It was a supercharged V8 and it was a big pricing difference. And it's a sweet truck. I, I like the TRX, it's, it's amazing. But people still really want a Raptor. Well, now with the RHO coming out, this, in my opinion, as a Ford Raptor enthusiast, I've owned I think six, seven Raptors, as well as the Bronco Raptor I'm driving now. But Ford has the biggest competitor now they've had in this segment, this RHO. Here's what I mean. 2024, 801A, F-150, basically around 82,000 starting price. The RHO is now coming out. It's, trucks are being built right now. 
They start at $72,000. It's $10,000 less. It's 100 horsepower more. You can get it with hands-free driving, massaging seats, and to be fair, an arguably nicer interior. Now, the rest of the truck, as far as the build quality, that's debatable. There's gonna be Ford fanboys, there's gonna be Ram fanboys. I'm not gonna say either of those, because I think Ford builds a pretty darn good truck, especially the frame, and especially the suspension in this thing. It's next level, it's proven itself, it's, it's a great truck. But, the new RHO is $10,000 less than this thing, and dealers are marking them down $10,000. So you can effectively get an RHO $20,000 less than the standard Raptor. Now, if you go 37 package Raptor and it's MSRP, that's almost $30,000 less. So what's the answer that makes a good win-win for Ford and for the customer? Actually, you might say it's the Ford F-150 trimmer. On the surface, yes, because it is less expensive and you can get a V8 in that, but it's actually not that truck, but it's part of this truck in the Raptor, why not? I'm gonna call it Raptor R Lite. Call it a scat pack. I, I think it's a funny term to call it a scat pack Raptor, but think about what Chrysler and the Fiat brand did with the Challenger. They came out with a scat pack because they knew not everybody could afford a Hellcat, but they want the sound of the V8. Dude, they sold a crap ton of the scat packs. It still looked good. It still was fast. It wasn't as fast and capable as the Hellcat, but it gave people a lot of what they wanted for 20% less money. So you tell me the answer, what consumers want. To me, I think a Raptor 35 package or 37 package with a Coyote from the factory is the most ultimate Raptor. And here's why I say this, is the Raptor R better? Of course, it's gonna have more power, it's a beast. But if you could go get a Coyote 5.0 F-150 Raptor for say 82 grand or so, why not? And I think it makes sense for a lot of reasons. Ford's gonna have to discount Raptors now going up against the RHO. The competition just got stiff. But what if they could keep the price at 82 grand instead of having to drop prices to sell a EcoBoost Raptor against the RHO and it's just gonna be this price to the bottom. Everyone's just gonna beat each other up. Give people what they want. 5.0 Coyote Raptor. Obviously the five liter Coyote can fit under the hood of an F-150 because it does it right here. Nothing against the EcoBoost, the Power Boost. They're great engines. I respect them, I love them. They're great at what they do. But for Raptor, I think most people would agree they would be happier with a lower horsepower V8 Raptor than a Power Boost Raptor or an EcoBoost Raptor. Because guess what? It's super easy if you want more power with a Coyote to go through a Whipple Supercharger, Roush Supercharger on it. Next thing you know, you got a 600 horse, 700 horse, 1,000 horsepower Raptor. People aren't buying Raptors for fuel economy. They're buying these for the fun factor. And I'm sure there's probably a lot of talks going on about what powertrain for the next generation F-150 Raptor. Well, it's probably not gonna be electric unless there's like some new battery technology that comes out that's absolutely amazing. But if they're gonna make it with a ICE powertrain, man, it's so simple and cheap just to throw a basic Coyote Get rid of the 3.5 high output EcoBoost and just do a Coyote. And you could still sell it for the same price as they're going today instead of having to discount to try to compete with the RHO on a race to the bottom for pricing. Just my opinion, but I think the five liter, call it the OG Raptor, it's what everybody's wanted since the first gen Raptor came out because the first gen Raptor was still sort of affordable. It was like really close to standard F-150 pricing. And if we use that same economics of scale, we look at the trimmer versus this, man, they're really darn close in pricing. But with discounts and everything, it's probably a $10,000 discount to get the trimmer. But man, a five liter Coyote with 410 gears in a Raptor, that would be the truck I would want. Nothing against the Raptor R, but a 5.0 Coyote Raptor is a truck I wouldn't feel bad about putting miles on it. With the Raptor R, it's so special, it's so exclusive. Gosh, you feel bad to actually use this thing for what it's intended. So Ford, if you watch, how awesome would it be if you guys made an OG Legacy Raptor Coyote Edition? That would be amazing. I think, I think you'd be surprised at how well it would sell. People would give up 20 horsepower 
and 60 foot pounds of torque versus a high output EcoBoost, just to hear the sound of that beautiful Coyote V8. Anyhow, if you think I'm crazy, leave a comment below. If you think the idea is great, leave a comment down below. But I think Ford should consider this option. Thanks for watching.